Hey there and welcome back to Best Practice TV. This is Ask Best Practice and this is video two in a series of frequently asked questions on how to conduct internal audits. I've got a bunch of questions here that I'm working my way through left over from our internal audit webinar that was fantastic. So if you didn't see the internal audit webinar, you jump onto our website, we'll put the link below and register and you'll get a link to the free internal audit webinar that we ran a couple of months back. This is the balance of questions. So stay on here, stay tuned. We'll get through these questions and I'll see you soon. So thanks for joining us back here at Best Practice TV in video two of our series on frequently asked questions for internal auditing. So the next question in our series, and we've got a big long list here that we're getting through, is is it mandatory to have internal audit activity? So, well, that depends. There's no law for it, there's no law against it. But if you have chosen to operate an ISO, International Organization for Standardization Management System for Quality, so ISO 9001, 2015, uh, for safety, ISO 45001 draft standard, or there's an Australian standard 4801, or there's the international OSHA standard, which is uh, 18001, or there's 27001 for data security. Uh, there's lots of 001s, uh, or for ISO 14001 2015 for environmental management. Yes, if you've elected to implement one of those systems and get certified, yes, internal audits or, or something that follows the same intent as internal audits are a mandatory activity. Uh, however, there are a lot of organizations who don't get certified and you might be watching this just learning about the standards. Um, and I think that internal audits, or it's my opinion that internal audits are a great complementary activity to get an organization started on the business improvement journey and the business improvement cycle. So as part of that business improvement cycle, what we see is internal audits being sort of one of the things to get you started. So if you don't know what to do, you don't know how to approach it, I'd recommend jumping onto our website and downloading one of our free checklists. And you can print out that checklist and you can start looking at your organization and undertaking maybe a desktop assessment. Now that is a form of audit because you're saying, well, is the organization doing what this checklist requires? So internal audits obviously are all about, are we doing what we said we would do? You know, it's looking at doing a best practice assessment. What are our best practices? Are we doing our best practices as part of that process? So an internal audit, yes, it's mandatory if you follow the standards. But I think it's more than a, the question being about mandatory, is it beneficial? Yes, huge amount of value. Anyone in your organization who undertakes an internal audit and keeps it simple and does it and it's nice and short and sweet will learn something. So there is a huge amount of value that's extracted in the form of training and acquisition and absorption and digestion of knowledge. So yes, uh, I would say if, if, if I was the person telling your organization, I'd say absolutely, they're a mandatory thing. It's like eating. You need to do it every day. I think internal audits monthly, little mini ones, are a great way to keep growing and improving your organization. Okay, next question. Um, uh, what are the critical skills and attributes of a chief audit executive or a lead auditor? Um, look, I think, um, look, you've got to be handsome. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's really important. No, no. Um, look, I, I think you need to be a professional. And uh, here at Best Practice, we don't do suits and ties and you know the stuffy business attire. We're, it's about being smart, casual, professional because we're really focused on the professional intent, the knowledge, the skills, and the technical areas. So the skills and attributes are obviously some technical areas. Most importantly is your communication skill, your ability to communicate in the language of the organization that you're working with in your company, with the people in your company. And I think that's really important. A good understanding of the culture and the cultural value, so the culture of the organization and the local culture where that organization exists, in the country that it exists in. Now those things um, are more important than all of the rest of the technical stuff because they all pivot around your ability to influence, your ability to question, your ability to influence, and your ability to guide the organization towards the improvement objectives that have been set. So, you know, skills and attributes, I think, then, of the lead assessor is obviously being a team leader, being able to manage logistics, you know, global logistics in some instances, or if you're a team leader like I am, huge teams of 40 auditors that are all running around the country looking at all sorts of different organisations and the ability to manage. Now, I have people that obviously help me with that, but I'm obviously the leader of that team. So it is something to sort of start to think about 
terms of those attributes. Now, if you wanna do some research, there's an old international standard, not current anymore and it's been superseded, called ISO 19011, and that was all about quality and environmental management system audits. Now, just ignore that it's about quality and environment audits. Go looking at that document for its skills and attributes. It talks about procedural steps of undertaking audits. It's a great old international standard where it's got some good guidance and some good reading. And so what we might try and do is pop a checklist up on our website for you that's got some information because the standard's been superseded. But if you can find an old copy of ISO 19011, it's a great little short and sweet guide on how to conduct audits at a lead level, but also for, for making best practices um, or building out a process of best practices for internal audits in your organization. Okay, next question is, uh, what are the skills what are the skill sets and staffing needs of an internal audit activity? Okay, well the two things are obviously the organization, you've got a team members and right here next to me is my sales and marketing team. Uh, we've obviously got to have people available to talk to. Uh, the second thing in terms of resourcing is we need to have a system for them to follow. So if we go out there and say, what are you guys doing? What process are you following? They've got in sets of instructions and guidance in terms of what their objectives are. Uh, and then obviously the assessors, so the people that are undertaking the assessments and have they got any training. So we here at Best Practice, all our auditors are trained. I'd recommend you train your people too. Uh, so that, that's the sort of skills and resourcing in terms of doing that. So you've got to understand that there's two parts to it. Now it is really important to be very, very delicate with organisations. People and labour and the individuals involved in an audit cost money. So you've got to pay the salary or the wages and salary of the person being audited plus the wages and salaries of the auditor. So they can start to be quite an expensive activity. So it is very important to be focused on what the objectives are. The objectives are to verify that you comply with the standard, verify that you're following the planned arrangements. So are our sales and marketing people that are outside this studio doing what we said they would do and what we set them to do? And then the third thing is to look for opportunities for improvement. So opportunities for improvement would be, can we be more efficient? Can we save money? Can we minimize duplicate work? Can we avoid human error? Those are the sorts of internal audits and objectives that we're talking about. And then that will help you to understand how we resource it. Okay, so the next question is, what is enterprise risk management and what role in it does internal auditing play? Okay, so enterprise risk management is looking about risk-based thinking. All of the new international standards start with risk-based thinking. So looking at how you've identified risks, looking at prioritizing those risks and then looking at what controls you're going to apply. So I would expect to see in most modern organizations looking at the 2015 editions of ISO 9001 and 14001 or even 18001, 27001, any of the new international management system standards, I'd expect to see those organizations have risk registers. So a corporate risk register that starts to unpack all the high level risks that are part of the risk horizon for the organization quality, safety, environment, data security, food, all those sorts of things, and start to unpack the controls. So that's your enterprise risk management system that starts to say, these are the issues, these, this is how we're gonna minimize, prevent, avoid them. And then your internal auditing function is, have we got those things in place? So we've got a real issue here at Best Practice where we could upset our customers if we don't undertake our audits properly. What policies, procedures, training, work instructions do we put in place? To avoid that, we've got a whole bunch of stuff documented. So the internal audit is, are we doing those things to minimize those risks, to prevent those things happening? And that's how, you, very simple answer to a complicated question, internal auditing plays a part. So that's a wrap for our frequently asked questions here on internal audits from our webinar. It was highly successful. Look for the webinar, it's still available. You can still download it. It's available in our training academy. Now there's lots of stuff happening here at Best Practice, so hit subscribe to our YouTube channel and you're gonna get lots more updates. There's two to three, three minute videos a week. They're absolutely a lot of fun putting them together for you. They are for you, they help you to grow. Look for me on LinkedIn. A lot of great stuff that's being put out on my LinkedIn account. Send me a direct message if you've got any questions. The Best Practice Facebook page has got lots of great top tips. And then the marketing girls over here to my left hand side have got lots of great Instagram posts coming to you every day every single day, little Instagram clip, motivational, inspirational, starts to ask questions, what are your goals, all the great stuff that's going on, what are your best practices. I'm Kobe Simmet, it's been great, great fun doing the webinar, great fun answering your questions, look for me on LinkedIn, send me a message, say hi, I'll shout out to you, and I'll see you next time on Best Practice TV, bye for now.